Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And when I get some questions to go through it, which I rarely do, I like to respond to you. And one of the questions I got was, what was a Mac? Let me explain to you what a Mac was. A Mac was a McDonald's spoon. You would know it's a little McDonald's stirring spoon that they used to stir in the coffee. But us as drug dealers fucked it up and sold so many Mac spoons. Now, that little wafer you see, that's because we sold so many Mac spoons, which is McDonald's. A Mac is one of those little bitty spoons you used to stir your coffee with. One Mac of dope of that was $10. Or like I told you in jail, right, 100. But normally on the street, one Mac costs you $10. And what I'm saying to you now, the only place you can get a Mac from is out of the country, the United States of America. You can get them in Canada. We used to run across the border from Detroit and get them, get them in Canada all the time. In New York, they used to make them up, a guy used to make them up plastic. He had plastic Mac spoons because the ones you used to get from McDonald's would break all the time. So they had some nice ones in New York made from the same cast that was plastic that they used to sell. But the Mac spoon was McDonald's Mac. It came from McDonald's restaurant. Mac Spoon, that is why in Detroit and in the 50 states, you do not see those little coffee stirrer spoons. You see a little windmill wafer because we sold so many Mac Spoons here in America, New York, Detroit, Chicago, all over the 50 states of America. We as drug dealers burnt out Mac Spoons. Everybody, not no one anybody everybody in the country came to know the max spoon and use it in the game packing up bundles and things like that so a max spoon if you wanted it by weight i would tell you it might be a tenth maybe i've never weighed a mac because in the spoon when you cap it off and throw it in the vault and lick and seal the boat that's how you did it. But if I had to guess it, I would say a Mac might be a tenth. I would say might a tenth. So that's what a Mac spoon is. To everybody who didn't know what a Mac spoon, and I'm sure a lot of you don't, because unless you've been out the country, you haven't seen those little spoons they use to stir the coffee with at McDonald's. If you go to Australia, Anywhere out of, out of America, Canada, you will see a Mac spoon. They still exist today. McDonald's Mac spoon. Famous all around the 50 states. Brothers getting money made McDonald's Mac spoon famous. Now let me go to, to the day's story. I just try to answer questions and tell you because I would be curious and that was an excellent question. Thank you very much for whoever sent it. I appreciate that as I appreciate all of my subscribers and I always say thank you for the question and thank you to my subscribers. Now here at Real True Street Crime, today's story is we're going to call Walking Dead Man. That's today's story. Walking Dead Man. A guy at the park was saying, I ain't never seen a walking dead man. And he was hollering it out loud. And I'm running around the park. And after I finished running, the brother sitting on the bench was still, brother, and he, said, he asked me, he said, brother, have you ever seen a walking dead man? And I said, yeah, brother, I have. My father was a walking dead man. He said, what, brother? Come on, man, tell me what you mean. I said, brother, my father had 60 years in jail for a non-violent crime. And my father himself used to call himself a walking dead man, and it used to make me tear up. And he explained it. He said, in here, all of these men in here who got life, 
letters, not numbers. Once you get them letters, you're a walking dead, man. If you got numbers, there's always a chance that you're going to get out. My father had high numbers, but he was in the category of he always had a chance to get out. That's why he was always at the law library every day fighting to find the words in the case to set him free. But let me explain to you about a walking dead man. You got 60 years for a non-violent crime. Now, who can you help? Unless you are the fat man, Eddie Jackson. Unless you got connections all over the world and you got somebody to carry them out, swallowing in Mexico, swallowing here, sending motherfuckers over here to swallow. Understand that very few men can do that. So he, to me, was not a walking dead man. But to himself, he knew I will probably never see the streets again in my lifetime. Let me tell you one special thing when you're a walking dead man. Me and Dennis was doing another drought up to Terry Hut. And my father... We was on the road riding there. We had the cordon blue. We had the raw. We had the weed. And we had the hash. Okay. I'm on the road and my sister called. Said daddy want to talk to you. Called. He said son are you coming to visit me? I said I'm on my way right now. He said son. And I knew what he was saying when he said it. Son. If you can. Get here early because they got white castles in the machine and I'd like to have one. A white castle become a big thing that when you're doing 60, you will never taste a white castle, a Big Mac, a Wendy's burger, a Whopper, none of that again. What my father was saying to me, I put two bags of white castles in with the cordon blue with the weed, with the hair line, and with the hash, and with the four fifths of cordon blue. He wanted some white castles hamburger. And I gave him two bags full of them to the rim. You understand? And I was just hoping the guy would get there and no insects or nothing would get in him. But now I see the day door dash. A lot of people have you leave it on the ground and they go ahead open. So I imagine the young brother who was in the camp. And see, this is another thing I want y'all to know. Like that young guy in the camp who used to run and pick that stuff up for my father and them and bring it back and bring it in there and pour the liquor in the containers and shit so they would never know and throw the bottles out. Okay, understand this. When you're a young guy doing shit like that, like Demetrius, you looking at the fat man get out to plug you. So he working on getting his plug right there. He go out there in the woods, get all that shit and bring it back, honestly, because the fat man already know what it is. It's 28 grams of weed, 28 grams of hash, 28 grams of dope. He know what's there. So you can't beat it and you bring it back, honestly, because you split it with the whole clique. That's for the whole clique. The whole clique used to get off having a sip of my fucking corner on blue, reminiscing of what they used to do in the streets. That's special when you locked up to have that brief moment where you could taste that cordon blue and hit that hash pipe or hit that joint. Nigga, or if you like to blow dope, hit that dope, nigga. It's so special in jail because you don't ever know if you're going to make it back to the streets. Because when you got 20, 30, 40 years, like my father, 60, you try to live the highlight every day you can and having a shot of cordon blue in a white castle make you laugh and kick your heels up no matter what you paid for it. It was well worth it. And I'm gonna tell you one other thing. Like these glasses right here I'm wearing. If I go to visit my father and he walks out wearing a pair of glasses, I sit mine down, he sit his down, 
he picked mine up and put them on. Nobody ever knows. He walks in with my glasses on. Now he got the big money Casales in jail, and that's what he wore every day and got a script in there put in him. But I gave him the Casale frame. That was the hottest glasses at that time. So my father used to wear Casale glasses. Same thing with these shoes. He couldn't do it with these because these are too loud. I put on a brand new pair of Nikes, New Balance. He liked his favorite pair we used to do it with. New Balance 990s. I put on a pair of those. He put on a pair of shoes, walk out. We switch shoes, nobody never know. I walk out with his jail shoes on. He walk in with the New Balance 990s. These are things we used to do in jail. And I don't like to tell y'all too much because I don't want to fuck up nothing for nobody today. But I, when I last went, a lot of things they changed, a lot of cameras they put in. But this is the story of walking dead men and things we used to do as a walking dead man so he wouldn't feel so much like he was walking dead man because I needed him to live. This is Eddie Jackson Jr., real true street crime, telling you, go over and check Jelani out at the tasting table. Great chef, straight out of Baker's College. Try the fish tacos. I recommend them heavily with that lime sauce and the cabbage shredded up fine. Get him to make that for you. And if possible, that homemade ice cream cherry with the heavy cream and goat cheese is out of sight. So go over there and check Jelani out on Tasting Table. And as I always have to say to you all before I leave, thank you to all my subscribers. I'm going to keep the stories coming better and better. I'm chronicling Demetrius's five beef. They coming at you back, rolling them through there. But I had to take you through walking dead men. So as I say to you all, Go over and take a listen to Crying Town on Spotify. And we're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Like, subscribe, and share. Happy New Year. I'm out.